Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be opening up the Starfinder Deck of Many Worlds. So I'm just going to be doing sort of an, uh, I guess, unboxing would be the proper term. Uh, we'll go through, see what some of the cards look like, and then I will uh, sort of give my review and my thoughts of it at the end of the video. Uh, first things first, I do want to just make it clear that this product was sent to me by Paizo for the purposes of doing a review. Uh, however, Paizo is not uh, sponsoring the video, they're not paying uh, me to do these, and they're not reviewing the video first before it goes out or suggesting edits or dictating any of the things that are said in these videos. Uh, so any opinion that I express is 100% completely, totally my own. Uh, so just sort of want to get that out of the way. Uh, but I do want to thank them for sending this to me. And this is uh, one of the things that I've been most excited about uh, since I heard that they were announcing it. Uh, so the Deck of Many Worlds is sort of a, a card system that you can use to generate uh, different planets, worlds, like star system sort of thing. And I just think it's a really, really uh, neat idea. So we're going to have a look at it here. It's nice artwork on the front. And in general, these card products uh, that have been coming out for Starfinder and Pathfinder have been really, really well done. So this, I don't think this is going to be an exception. Uh, the suggested retail price for this is $19.99 US. Uh, which would probably put it around $25-$26 uh, Canadian. And on the back it says, Infinite Worlds, a populated galaxy with weird and wild worlds in just minutes, with the Starfinder deck of many worlds. Using just a few cards chosen at random from this 100 card deck, you can generate millions of unique worlds, each with an illustration, an array of physical and cultural attributes, <coughs> alien species, both friend and foe, and engaging plot hooks. <coughs> Um, did you, I lost my, <laughs> uh, use these cards to enrich your adventures in the Starfinder role-playing game, or anytime you want to see what wonders uh, the universe might hold. So again, this is something that I think can transcend just the Starfinder RPG. I think that any sort of science fiction or science fantasy uh, role-playing system that you use, I think, could benefit from something like this. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll obviously be able to know more or know better uh, if that's the case once I spend some time really looking through and uh, reviewing it. Uh, so, but uh, it just seems in general that I think there's a lot of useful things uh, or a lot of uh, applications for this outside of just uh, the singu singular RPG. So uh, I think that's, a, again, a really clever idea. And if it's someone buys it for a different system, but they decide they might want to give Starfinder a try, then that is uh, awesome as well. So just a cool idea overall. Uh, so with the Deck of Many Worlds, we have it's uh, bundled to two 50-card packs. I think this, there's about 100 cards in here total. So we're just going to go through and... So I'm not going to go through and read all of these uh, all these cards here, but we do have uh, several cards that just tell you how to get started. So we have the one start here. Uh, I will read this card. Um, it says, just welcome to the deck of many worlds. You can use this deck of 100 cards to quickly and easily create millions of possible worlds by following a short set of instructions. Uh, after you make your first world, you likely won't need to reference these instructions much, leaving you uh, free to fill entire galaxies with worlds of your own creation. On the opposite side of this card, you'll see how multiple cards combine to create a single world, uh, while the next instruction card names each element uh, on the world cards. The rest of these instructions walk you through using those elements to create truly unique worlds and show you how to use this deck to inspire your creation of systems, settlements, and characters. As you proceed, remember, this is your galaxy, so you can always change any minor or major detail of the worlds you create as you see fit. Change gravity or the resident species at a whim, add more, uh, sorry, add or remove entire continents, tweak story prompts, do anything that you want. And then on the back we just have uh, a sample, sample world there, and we just have the, the cards that sort of explain what the other cards are, how they work, and uh, I will get further into that uh, once I actually have some time to read through these and make a few of them myself, but we're just going to go through, like I so said, we got some stuff here. So it looks like on the front of the cards... Okay, cool. Uh, there's actually several different designs uh, for similar type of planets, like terrestrial worlds. So just some cool 
designs there. I, I like that. That one's almost entirely like land. So, again, just some really cool... I mean, I guess the, the only real options would be like terrestrial and, and gas giant. I can't think of too many other uh, types that you might have. But I just, I really like just the, the design of some of these worlds. Like just the, the planets themselves. This one's almost entirely uh, ocean based. And it looks like I haven't seen any two that look the exact same. That one looks a little Lovecraftian. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that though. That one, the planet looks like it has a split running down it. Almost like a donut shaped planet. And just some really cool, interesting designs here. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and then we get into some gas giants. And again, they all look uh, really nice as well. And then just we'll go to the back of these cards just to show what they sort of look like. Okay, so we have, looks like some, some creature types or like a dominant race or some of the different uh, things that you might find there. So again, I think that's kind of a nice little uh, little touch. And there are uh, ways of setting these up. And like I so this said, is, this is just sort of the un unboxing portion of the video. Uh, so I don't fully uh, glitch Gremlin. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, just again, some really cool, some really cool stuff here. And just you know, love the creature designs, and uh, so interested to see sort of how uh, these shape up. We'll just look at the at the last pack here as well, just to see what we got. I'm thinking there might be like terrestrial worlds, gas giants, and then maybe moons. We got a planet with rings on it, some ringed planets. And some really unique looking ones. Gas giants. And water world. Probably better than the movie. Okay. Ice worlds. Lava worlds. So these are ones that are probably pretty close to the, I would imagine be pretty close to the sun. Jungle world, so yeah, it actually goes into different types of uh, like dominant terrain, which is nice. Desert worlds. Irregular worlds. Okay, this one I kind of like. Uh, so this one, we'll, we'll look at this card a little closer. So irregular world, gravity low, atmosphere none. So biomes are airborne, aquatic, boreal, arctic, desert, forest, marsh, mountain, plain, subterranean. Uh, this world is a hard light hologram uh, that might be nigh indistinguishable from a real world uh, or might even be monochromatic or even transparent. So again, just some cool ideas there. Irregular world, so mega structure built on or around a star, uh, almost like not quite a Dyson sphere, but something I guess kind of similar. Uh, <laughs> a planet shaped like a D20. Gotta love that. Oh, here's a donut world. Okay, so the other one maybe just had like a weird, uh, I don't know, maybe a black hole. I'll have to go back and, and actually read, uh, read that card um, to see sort of what was on there because I just again I think that's pretty cool. Asteroids, colony ship, space station, irregular, or sorry, what is this? Yeah, irregular world, trust your world, one that looks like it's tidally locked. And yeah, so just some really cool looking, uh, really cool looking cards. So that was sort of, this is the, the preview of what's inside. Uh, so I'm just going to spend some time going through the instructions and we'll sort of do a tutorial of how to use the cards and we'll make a planet here on camera. So. Uh, like I said, I will cut away and uh, I'll start uh, going through the process. And I'll be right back. Alright, uh, so we are good to go. Uh, if you hear any sounds in the background, I do apologize. It's been a couple of days since I got this product initially. 
um, and they are doing some construction work outside and they were putting together like the scaffolding and everything and this is actually like my fourth attempt at this part of the video um, but at this point I'm just gonna soldier through it regardless because I want to get this done and get this out um, so so I do apologize for that in advance if it becomes an issue but let's just dive right into it here so I have everything ready to go and uh, the while there are a bunch of these instructional cards included um, honestly all the information that we're gonna need right now to create a planet is right here on this one uh, on this one card. Uh, it gives us several different steps. The final one is actually optional and that's just if we wanted to use uh, moons with this uh, with our planet. We're not going to do moons today uh, but we could do another video down the road where that's the case. Uh, so the first step that we do is to shuffle up our deck and um, cut the cards and have everything set up. So we take the first card off the top of our of, of our deck and we place it down here. So uh, we do that, whoops, let's just center that a little bit more, and then we'll zoom in a little bit on it. So uh, we have here our terrestrial world, uh, and it gives you the, the basic information about the world just to begin with. So we have uh, standard gravity, like Earth-like gravity, Earth-like atmosphere. Uh, so the biomes are airborne, aquatic, boreal, arctic, desert, forest, marsh, mountain, plains, and subterranean. So basically, uh, pretty much any type of environment you could think of to sustain life, uh, this planet does. And its description just says that it has thin, sprawling continents that make up the landmass of this Earth-like world. So you can just kind of see that they're not huge, sprawling continents, but they're sort of smaller, more contained. Underneath, we have religion. Law, Chaos, Good and Evil, Tech, Magic, and Accord. Um, so we're going to go through those sort of in a moment. Uh, we're going to move on to the next step, which is to um, determine how these attributes play out um, on our planet. And um, it also will give us um, some star fields that we use for populating with creatures and um, intelligent races afterwards, as well as a hook, which is sort of a, an idea or a plot that you could incorporate into adventures on that planet. So the uh, the first, so what we do is we flip the card over to its backside for the one that we're going to use here, and we line them up like this. So you can see we have arrows pointing up, down, or we have sort of a neutral dash. Uh, so we're just going to go through and explain those all right now. So uh, what we have is with religion, So and the, the order that these are in on different cards will be different, but they're all the same. Uh, all of these things are on each of the cards. Uh, so we have with religion, for example, the world, um, we have an arrow pointing up, so that means that religion is a very important part of this world. <clears throat> so it plays a significant role in everyday life. Uh, religious organizations are widespread and will probably have a significant amount of power uh, within like how you determine like laws and other things of that nature. So that's sort of an important part of this world is it's, it's a religious world. <clears throat> if it was neutral, then religion would exist, but it wouldn't necessarily be super widespread and it wouldn't have much say in the way that the planets um, operate, how the governments and things operate. So next we have law, chaos, good, and evil. Oh, uh, and sorry, with religion, if it was pointed down, it means that religions would be, um, they may exist, but they're disorganized and um, have very little, and have like no uh, influence or power whatsoever. So they'd be um, almost viewed as sort of almost like cult uh, sort of thing. They'd be isolated in their, uh, in their worship. Uh, law and chaos, if the arrow is pointing up, it means that it's a lawful society. If it's a dash, it's neutral. And if it's pointing down, like we have here, it is a chaotic society. Uh, good and evil, same thing. If it's pointing up, it's a good society overall. Uh, dash would be sort of neutral. And we're pointing down. So this is actually a, a highly religious, chaotic, evil planet. Um, this feels like a good place where something like the drow would have come from, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, we also have technology and magic next on this card. Uh, so if the arrow is pointing up, if, uh, for either one it just means that they are widespread and abundant and a significant part of everyday life. So technology, if the arrow is pointing up for that, would be a major component of everyday life. And arrows pointing up would mean things like technomancers and mystics um, have dominant roles in society as well. So it's just sort of, you know, and, and those things aren't mutually exclusive either. So you can have a very technological world that also has a high degree of magic in it. 
Um, if it's pointing up, it also means that the planet is likely spacefaring, meaning that it's capable of interstellar travel, um, uh, or at least interplanetary travel, uh, whereas if it's neutral like this, it means that it is a technologically capable world, but not at the point where they're visiting distant planets or anything like that yet. Um, the, the dash uh, for the technology thing uh, is sort of equivalent to like modern day Earth. And if the air is pointing down, it's sort of a, you know, almost like kind of a primitive world where there may be some technology or maybe there was like technology may have been lost from a previous civilization. So you kind of look at like pre-industrial sort of uh, things. And uh, with magic, if it's the dash, then you know magic exists, but it's not feared, it's not revered, it's just sort of something that's there. <clears throat> and if you have an arrow pointing down, then magic could be very distrusted. And so for example, if we had religion pointing up and magic pointing down, and you had a player character visit this planet and use a magical ability, then they could be potentially accused of witchcraft and hunted and, and pursued for that. So that's sort of how those work. And then we have a chord, which is essentially the easiest way to describe it, is how relatively peaceful is a planet. So uh, the chord arrow pointing up uh, means that society is stable and not prone to conflict or war. Uh, if it was a dash, then it's sort of uh, in between, and if it's pointing down, then it is sort of like a war-torn planet uh, kind of thing. Uh, I guess that's the easiest way, the base way to describe it. Uh, then we have our star fields, um, which we're going to use for populating with, uh, en with intelligent races and threatening enemy monster-type character creatures as well. And then we have our hook in the middle. So the hook for this one is actually kind of cool. So these are things you can incorporate into adventures if you wanted to run, uh, you know, if you wanted to use this for running adventures in. Uh, so here we have a world that is the afterlife of another world elsewhere in the galaxy. Uh, so with one of its uh, sapiens being reincarnated creatures from a different species on this other planet. So you could have a completely different solar system within the galaxy where when someone dies there, their soul is reborn uh, as something else on this planet. Uh, so it's actually kind of a really cool idea. And with religion being a thing, you know, that might be uh, a part of it, um, maybe a major aspect of it. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. Now with law and it being a chaotic evil world, this could be a place where maybe not the best people go to, but you know, we'll sort of see how that plays out. So we, we have that step. The next step is actually to draw another card and place it underneath this one with just the star fields and the hook showing. So we'll do that now. I'm trying to make sure everything fits. So we, we have star fields of one on both of these boxes on both sides, which will make things a little bit easier uh, when it comes to populating with, with creatures and stuff. But uh, the second hook says that this planet is menaced by spectral incorporeal threats that attack only at night. So that's kind of interesting. This uh, I, I kind of get the feeling that this planet is a place where bad people, <laughs> essentially when they die in this one planet, this is sort of their the, the place that they're sent to to sort of potentially suffer or have to atone for that. It's just kind of interesting. Uh, you know, again, you have religious play, religion playing a major aspect and with these spectral creatures, um, threatening everything. It also explains why, even though it is not a lawful or, or particularly moral society, why there's still relative peace because perhaps the spectral force that's threatening everyone plays a bigger role and, and essentially uh, ensures the peace. Um, so that, you know, the, the, it just the, why would people be fighting with one another when this much greater threat exists. So the players may be summoned to this world to try to find the source of this. Um, as far as it being a planet where people are reincarnated, um, it could be a situation where no one probably knows that. Uh, but if you make a player character from this world, then they could be driven by the fact that they have uh, memories of a past life and then try to work that out. So I think there's a lot of interesting potential that you can do with this. So that's, that's a really cool set of story hooks for the planet, as well as sort of how the planet itself functions. So the next step uh, is to populate, and the last step that we're going to be doing here is to populate this with uh, sentient creatures and um, threats, basically. Um, so we have our, like, our, our predominant races that might be like player character, or at least ones that would create a society. Uh, and that would be on the left side here, and then we would have our threats, so any like predominantly, you know, uh, monsters that pervade sort of the, the world or that could be a threat to, you know, the, the civilizations would be on this side. And uh, the way we determine how many is to actually add up the numbers 
on the star field. So the fact that we have one and one on the left side and one and one on the right side means that we're doing two on each side. So it actually works out uh, fairly fairly well and, and fairly easily uh, for the purposes of, of this, uh, this video. Uh, when I first was messing around with these to make a planet uh, before I started recording. Um, I think I had like four and three and then I had like uh, one and one. So there was like a ton of uh, sentient creatures, um, you know, or your, 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 your base races uh, for the planet. And then you only had a couple of like monstrous threats that were, were kind of uh, predominant. So it was interesting sort of how that worked out, but we got uh, two of each. So uh, the first thing we do is we populate the left side uh, so we've got this card here, and so we have the Decimer Imago. Uh, I actually don't, it's like a bird-like race, which is interesting. Um, this is from Alien Archive 3, so it does tell you what, uh, what book they're from. We get it to focus. There we go. Uh, so this is from Alien Archive 3. And uh, the way that we work these is that we just put this uh, on the side of our planet card here. Cool. And because they're on the top, they are the most widespread race. Um, if you looked at like a fantasy setting, for example, this is where humans would be. And then you would have like maybe elves and dwarves uh, underneath that, and then maybe halflings and gnomes underneath that. So that's sort of how that works out. And we have to do two of them because there were two uh, dots here. So the next one that we have are the Pathra uh, from the Alien Archive 2. So we have a bird-like race and a cat-like race, and somehow we still have uh, we still have relative peace, which is kind of kind of crazy, but interesting how that works out. So those are our dominant um, races, or, or uh, sapiens, I guess is what they're referred to uh, in the context of this card set. So now we got to do the same thing for monsters, for enemies, or for threats. Uh, so. Uh, we draw the, the we do the exact same process. So the first thing that we have here oh, is the sort of like octopus looking uh, creature known as halogen. If they're aquatic, it makes sense because there's a lot of water on this planet. Um, but that's sort of the the major uh, monster that we have here. So we just put them in that side there, and we had to do two like we did here. Uh, and oh boy, <laughs> uh, so another thing that might be ensuring some peace on this planet is the fact that not only are there these malevolent spirits that attack at night, but there's also dragons as a, uh, as a threat on this world. And so there we go. That is our planet. We have it made up. Um, I don't have a name for this planet because I'm awful at naming things. Uh, when I saw the afterlife thing, I was thinking that this could be like paradise. Um, but it's it's evil. It's it's chaotic, um, and um, you know it's menaced by these these spectral uh, creatures. Um, so maybe if I were to call it paradise, it would have to be ironically done. Uh, but I'm sure anyone other than me can come up with a better name because it's just not one of my strong points. Uh, but there we have our planet. So it's an Earth-like planet with regular gravity, standard atmosphere, all the different um, environments you can think of, which makes sense for the dragon. Uh, so we could have all the different types of dragons there. Um, the, the main races are these bird-like people or these cat-like people. Uh, it is a highly religious um, world, but not one that's particularly moralistic. <laughs> um, it's not the most technologically advanced or magically influenced world, uh, but it is a peaceful world, if for no other reason than maybe the control of the religious uh, facilities, or because of the dragons, or because of these spectral menaces that attack at night. So you may have to like you know stay bunkered down in the safety of your own home, sort of idea. Um, and uh, there's just a lot of cool ideas that you can do with this. I like the afterlife concept. So again, it, you could make stories around how that works, how that functions. You could have someone that is aware of the fact that they had a previous life and try to piece things together. Um, anyway, I just I, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this. And and that's really how I feel about this set as a whole, is that there's just so much cool, fun stuff that you can do with this that 
I, I, if you are running any sort of space-faring role-playing game, um, you know, Starfinder being the obvious choice, but even things like Traveler or Star Wars or Star Trek, or I'm sure there's a whole host of other ones. Um, if planetary travel is something that can happen in your game, um, then I think this is something that you should pick up. Because if you're like me, I'm awful at trying to come up with these things. Uh, myself. So to have something that is fun to work with. Like I actually really enjoyed drawing the cards and placing them and trying to figure out how these things work together. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh, I think it worked really, really well. The only thing that is kind of really left up to your own devices is coming up with a name for the planet, which again is not one of my strong points. So if you guys could think of a cool name for that uh, planet that I created here, uh, let me know in the comments below there. But I think this is a really awesome product. Um, and I think, you know, with the options to create settlements or to create, you know, um, uh, NPCs with, this is something that might may even be useful in just any sort of campaign. It doesn't even have to be space-themed. Um, so if you're just looking to create settlements or character types and, you know, define them using the cards here, uh, I think that there's a lot of potential for that as well. I haven't really dived into that aspect of the set yet, uh, but that's something that I could definitely do in a uh, in a separate video and uh, I just so again I just think that there's so much usefulness packed into what is really uh, a really unique product if you kind of stop and think of it like this is something that I never would have imagined of like on my own so the fact that Paizo created this um, is just really awesome in the first place and it is something that that kind of transcends the the system that it was initially developed for the only thing that would be um, that you would have to sort of work on if you were to adapt this for another role-playing game, uh, would be populating with, uh, with races and with monsters. So you could have a situation where you just have lists um, that you could roll randomly on for you know, your, your sentient races and your, your threats or your, your monsters, and you can sort of do that. So there's, there's easy workarounds for you know, not using the Starfinder races, or you could look at the art, and it's something that could inspire you to create your own races and your own uh, in the, the RPGs that you're running. So there's just a lot of really useful stuff in here, and I think that this is something that really does work incredibly well, uh, regardless of what system you're using. It's just, it's just such a clever idea, and it works so well, and it's so fun. It's fun to do. Like that's the important thing. Uh, I was a little intimidated by the the instruction cards at first, but then I started reading through them, and it was really simple, and it was fun. Like I had fun doing this. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've picked this up. Uh, what are some of the planets that you've made? So what are some of the the hooks, the technology levels, the religion? You know how religion is viewed. Um, Stuff like that. I, I'd love to know. And uh, also, definitely check out uh, the Paizos, like their Facebook page and their Twitter page, because they had posts for this deck here as well, um, asking people to leave comments about the cool things that they've made uh, on their on their pages as well. So be sure to do that uh, absolutely as well, if you haven't already. Uh, so again, I want to thank Paizo for sending this to me. Uh, this is a really awesome product, and I, I, just, I had a ton of fun going through this. And uh, I, I definitely plan on doing a couple more videos uh, with this product uh, going forward. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun there. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to them for sending it. And thank you to all of you uh, for watching this video. And uh, let me know what you think about it again. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments, um, your thoughts. And I'd love to hear some of the cool planets that you've made and some of the awesome names that you can come up with for the planet that we have here. Uh, so thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.